Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Hodge. Um, I'm an interop engineer for the OpenStack Foundation, and thanks for coming out to this session today. The power of collaboration, how cross-community collaboration benefits both the CNCF and OpenStack. Um, I've had the privilege of working in uh, two amazing communities over the last six months or so. Um, and today we're going to have a, pan a panel from uh, members of both this kind of who are involved in both CNCF and OpenStack development efforts. Um, so uh, let's start off with introductions. Um, we'll begin with Matt Butcher. Um, he's the principal engineer at Microsoft and he's the lead of the Kubernetes Helm project. Um, he's authored eight technical books, the most recent um, Go and Practice with Matt uh, Farina. And he's also, he's also uh, wrote, you may have seen the uh, Illustrated Children's Guide to Kubernetes. It's a very popular book. I, I learned everything I know from Kubernetes from it. Um, so please give him a uh, warm welcome. Um, uh, our next panelist is uh, Michał Jabrowski. Uh, did I get that yeah, right? Jabrowski. No, no, not quite. Like Michał <laughs> <laughs> is fine. Yeah, Michał. We have, we have Michał. Um, he works for Intel and is the PTL of Cola, which is an, a toolkit for installing OpenStack using containers. Um, and finally, we have Alan Meadows, who works as a chief Chief Platform Architect for AT&T and is responsible for designing, maintaining, and scaling cloud infrastructure that spans hundreds of data centers with mission-critical telecom requirements. Thank you. Um, so just a little bit of a background. Kind of the, um, the, the impetus of this panel was a collaboration that has been going on between um, members of the OpenStack community and members of the uh, uh, CNCF and Kubernetes Helm community um, towards uh, um, developing Helm in order to help accommodate uh, rapid deployment of OpenStack using the, uh, the Helm toolkit. Um, so uh, I think that maybe the best place to start is to kind of give people a little bit of background, a little bit of introduction. And so if we could start and just um, get a little bit of an overview as to what Helm is and what it does. Sure. Uh, so Helm is the package manager for Kubernetes. So. Uh, those of you who have played around with Kubernetes a little bit uh, are probably very familiar with the fact that all of Kubernetes resources are deployed using either YAML or JSON files. Uh, and you deploy at a fairly granular level. You deploy a pod, you deploy a service, you deploy an ingress, and all of these things. Uh, most applications are more complex than just a pod or a replica set or something like that. It, it's uh, sort of a, a agglomeration of all these things. And so uh, we built Helm as a way of packaging up an application and all of the different manifests it requires, and then deploying those into Kubernetes and then sort of managing their life cycle. We were really inspired by the ease of use of traditional package managers for operating systems, like uh, Homebrew on OS 10 and apt-get and RPM uh, and the systems that we've seen sort of uh, uh, spring up and then have a very long and healthy lifespan inside of the Linux world. We wanted to bring that kind of ease of use uh, to, the, to Kubernetes itself. Uh, we like to say that if Kubernetes is an operating system for the cloud, then this is a package manager, much like what you would use in a traditional uh, single node instance of Linux. And, okay, so with that, with that uh, uh, description in place, uh, maybe, um, uh, um, we, we can we can hear some descriptions of how uh, both Cola and um, AT and T's uh, OpenStack Helm are leveraging Helm to deploy OpenStack. Okay, so as Matt said, Kubernetes is good to deploy simple things, but when things get more complex, you kind of need external tooling like Helm is supposed to. So, I think it's not going to be big of a surprise in the room if I said that OpenStack OpenStack is pretty damn complex, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, uh, we tried to, we, when we went to the, we didn't call out, we have sub-project called Cola Kubernetes, which does what deploys on the Cola, uh, Cola images on top of Kubernetes, and orchestrating and uh, binding these this this containers together, you know, and creating uh, work, kind of workloads like deploy MyRDB, uh, create a database for Nova, that sort of stuff. It's becoming more and more complex if we would want to just do it with, uh, you know, we, we, we'd pretty much write, have to write uh, hundreds of thousands of lines of YAML just to, you know, to create the, create the, uh, the 
file set that would give us OpenStack at the end. So with usage of Helm, we managed to get to leverage the templating engine for within Helm and all in some of the lifecycle management tools for Helm to create much more readable, much more content, uh, concise, and uh, uh, much more flexible charts. And the chart is a package in Helm nomenclature uh, to be able to deploy many different open stacks. There, there's more than one open stack deployment and there, there are lots of snow, no snowflakes out there. And uh, one of the, and we managed to use Helm to create this sort of compositability and this sort of flexibility that, that was needed to any production open stack. And yeah. I'd, I'd add a little bit too to, to, what, to what Matt said about it being a package manager at the end of the day, similar to, to app get or other things. It also serves as, as an interface for the operators. Um, so it, wh what we mean by that is that leveraging the, the templating engine that you're talking about and, and wrapping the, the, the deployment um, artifacts that need to go out into Kubernetes, um, in addition to that, it provides a, a really nice entry point to where certain things are exposed for the operators to be able to turn on, turn off features they can enable or not enable. Um, and without that, you just have Kubernetes manifests and that there is no entry point to that. There's no way for people to control what's going on there. Um, so it provides a really great interface for deploying applications that I think goes beyond something like apt-get at the end of the day. So, um, so, so just one administrative note about the talk. You may have noticed um, on the screen here, there's a, there's a link there. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with, with Etherpad, it's a collaborative editing system that the OpenStack community uses. And so if you have any questions or um, you want to take any notes on it, uh, feel free to go to that link and you can um, kind of add anything you want there. Um, so now that we, 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 we've kind of like set the stage of like, Helm is a, it's a, it's a package manager, it's an installer, it manages complex applications inside of Kubernetes. Um, you know, one of the exciting things has been uh, over the last six months or, you know, or, or so, there's been a tremendous amount of collaboration between um, the OpenStack communities and the Helm community. Um, and, and I was wondering maybe you could describe, you know, how that started and how that worked. I, I, could, I could start out with, I, you know, uh, one of the things that's been occurring, uh, the, the very first thing that, that was great, I think, for both sides is the, the reoccurring calls that we started with the Helm community. So we were all on, what was it, bi-monthly bi -monthly calls? Yep, something, yep. something along those lines. And it was, a really, it was really great because it was, it was a dialogue. It was a dialogue in the sense that it wasn't, here, here's what OpenStack needs and we want you guys to go implement it. It was, here's what we're trying to do. We got feedback on the approach. We got, we got to talk about the ways that we were approaching problems. And we got to talk about them with the people who wrote the product at the end of the day. And it was, it was a really great experience. Um, and also it resulted in both these teams contributing stuff back to the, back to the product at the end of the day. And um, I think it helped shape how we approached leveraging the tool to, to get the job done that we probably might have taken a, a different path um, at the end of the day, if we hadn't had uh, that close collaboration um, with the Helm guys. Yeah, I, I think we probably could have taken two or three different routes when we, so we basically all discovered sort of on Slack and in IRC and a few other places that, uh, that there were several individuals all trying to work on some of the same stuff. And I think we could have tried some very official sounding routes where we, you know, went, had, you know, CNCF contact, you know, OpenStack Foundation and, and dealt with it as an org to org layer. Or we could have continued the way we kind of started, which was random people sending other people emails and Slack messages and, and uh, pinging them in IRC saying, hey, I've got a question. But the kind of middle route was when we all sort of discovered that we were working on the same things, we threw together a, a working group where everything about the group was really uh, architected around the idea that we all had some common problems to solve. And we would do better if we could meet about them for a little while, discuss stuff, get it all in the open, and then kind of take breaks, come up with some solutions, and then come back together. The two-week cadence seemed to work pretty well, didn't you think? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that ended up being absolutely remarkable about this, from my point of view, uh, is that 
I think we had just around 20 people total participating in this group. There were a few people who rolled in and rolled out. There were about 15 people who were really core to it. Um, I counted up, and 15 of the 20 people had made at least one code contribution uh, to Helm. And, and two more of the people who hadn't contributed in code had contributed in documentation. And, and I know you guys were all, at the same time, busy working on your particular packages. So to me, that's remarkable uh, that, that this group of people didn't just spend you know, a couple hours, uh, a couple times a month uh, chit-chatting about stuff, but everybody really sort of put the shovels in the ground and actually started working on something and building something. That, to me, is really a mark of a successful collaboration uh, when things get done and code gets written across both projects. So from my standpoint, it's a, uh, I think it, it's be fair to say that OpenStack probably is and will be for at least some time one of the most complex things that will be deployed with Helm. And uh, I mean, obviously, when we try to pave the, ground, pave the roads for something like that, we will find some shortcomings. And uh, we managed to, to find, short find shortcomings, create a features to Helm that will help much more people and uh, not just OpenStack in that, in that space, it merge them to Helm and you know, improve both. It, it improved our life as an OpenStack deployment project and Helm for general non-OpenStack use case because we not, the features that we created are not you know, uh, that specific to our problem. So, so speaking of, of some, some, of the, some of the influences that the, that the communities um, had on, on each other's project, does, for, for each of the panels, is there anything that stands out in your mind as, as a feature that um, rose out, a feature or a design decision that rose out of this collaboration? Oh, that's an easy one for me. Uh, we had, again, you know, we had kind of started from uh, the inspiration of apt-get. Uh, to be honest, apt-get was the one that I found the most inspirational when I worked on this package format. Uh, what uh, OpenStack, I, I can't imagine being able to install something as complex as OpenStack with one simple apt-get apt -get command, but these guys have put together multiple ways of installing it with a single you know, tooling command. Um, Sometimes it wraps Helm or sometimes it is just a raw Helm command. In order to get something like OpenStack configurable, uh, we had to add in the ability to switch on and off sub uh, package dependencies. So you could say, all right, in this particular case, uh, I want you know, the kitchen sink to be installed and it installs everything. In this case, uh, I want Nova installed and I want Swift installed, but I don't want for whatever reason, you know, uh, glance installed. I can't imagine what he would do without that. But uh, that was kind of one of the requirements that when I first saw it, drew a complete blank and said, I wasn't designing the system to be able to turn on and off dependencies like this. Uh, but then what happened was uh, the group of people who were working on this expressed all their different uh, requirements and uh, preferences. And then I think ultimately, uh, it all came from uh, Justin Scott, who I think is working on, which project is he working on? He's working on Cola? Actually, yeah. And he actually, we, we came up with requirements, we iterated on those really rapidly, and then he went out and actually wrote that huge chunk of code. So that to me is really the most um, memorable instance of uh, the requirements of something highly complex, way outside of what we thought we were gonna be dealing with initially. Uh, you guys coming to us, explaining the requirements, and then even supplying an implementation that uh, that I think the Helm community is very proud of. So I will add additional feature, also that well, by, not by Justin, but by, by Chin, mm -hmm. uh, and that's installation from the like in Helm when you create your requirements file, it uses requirements as a, as a Helm package. However, uh, when we have uh, when we have a lot of packages within the same project, building all of them is not necessarily a very comfortable, I mean, very good way because we need to build a repository, then we need to build the package. And what we, what Chin created was uh, to be able to just use this file. Like, it's a simple, it seems to be simple, but everything is simple once some fun actually, someone actually think about it. Yeah. And make, make, and uh, came, came up with the idea. And the, the implementation wasn't that hard, the, uh, but the features, appears to be very good and very and we are extremely happy with it so yeah look the simple things that's what that's what good projects are made from and one of the coolest things about that feature is that was a feature that immediately the rest of the helm community was really excited about because it changed the way that they could do the development life cycle for charts 
Um, so they didn't have to set up a package repository before they could do local development for complex charts. And we see that feature used all the time now. I, I mean, for, for me, I remember we had, a, we had a conversation a while back and we mentioned you know, the particular need that we have for, for OpenStack Helm is that essentially at the, at the end of the day, we have a lot of independent charts, a lot of different overrides to feed them. And we had talked about that what we need is we need, we need Helm to, to, to morph into something more that can manage a, a chart of charts type, type of thing and, and be able to manage multiple charts in some way. And, and I, remember, I remember the response that, you know, at the end of the day, that's not really something that you guys saw the, the direction that that was going. And so we kind of, we kind of went off and, and decided to make some wrapping tooling around that um, to, to kind of build that, build that thing that could wrap around Helm to, to get that job done for us. And, and then we brought that back to you and we showed the community. And I think, I think the demonstration of, of what it is that we were asking for and trying to get I think is you know was, it had changed some minds that you know this is maybe this is this is actually a direction that we do uh, potentially want to go down um, at some point, which I think you know I think that was a win um, in some cases. How many people saw the Armada demo? In was it David Aronchek who did it? This is Sig, uh, Alex and um, was Sig Apps. Yeah, did anybody get to see that? That was one of the projects that was really born out of uh, AT and T's work on on Helm. And, and that actually raises a good point. And one of the things that we have all on this stage struggled with is that when you build a tool, the trickiest part in, in any software project is saying, OK, these are the boundaries, and the tool's not going to extend too far outside of these, because then it's doing things that we didn't anticipate. Uh, and, and Helm keeps pushing up against those boundaries all the time. And these very complicated use cases are, are good examples of cases where you say, oh, you know, if we just add this thing and this thing and this thing, and before long, you know, we're writing something closer to Puppet or Chef than, you know, Apt or, or Homebrew or something like that. And I feel like Armada was a really good example. Actually, the work that both teams have done exemplifies ways of capturing what is essential to the Helm project, but then starting to build some auxiliary tooling um, around this that will streamline cases that are designed more for operators in complex environments or, uh, or for earlier configuration management before sort of distilling it down. I, I think it, it, it basically demonstrates that, you know, that Helm at the end of the day is it's a, young, a young project. And, and what we're doing is we're taking the young project and we're trying to use it to install OpenStack. So we've gone from here to the end of the spectrum. And just as just as you both were saying, uh, at the end of the day, what, the ways that we're expanding this tool is really going to help any complex app application installing Kubernetes. We're, we're at the edge. We're taking something that's the most extreme and complex and interconnected. <laughs> yeah, and, but, and, and I think I think it kind of speaks to one of the questions that you know we were, you know that that that's. I guess been on my mind is that this is that Helm is a very young project. You know, Kubernetes is very young, and Helm is very young inside of the CNCF and the Kubernetes community. Um, you know, what is that experience like? You know, you know, bringing bringing a very new project to bear on, um, you know, a project that is very mature and has um, it has has a tremendous amount of complexity and a lot of moving parts. Um, uh, you know, but is also you know has a kind of an established, a very a strongly established user base too. I think it's been fun because I mean, it, because it, we get to work with a pretty small community over there on the on the Helm side, and that's that's been that's been fun because it's different on the OpenStack side. It's a yeah. huge, huge community. It's a different experience working in that. I think. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, you know, having fifteen to twenty additional contributors on, in this project has been huge for us. I mean, tremendously helpful in the the, the amount of impact uh, the the. the uh, OpenStack engineers have had on Helm as a product has been pretty exceptional, I think. It is also a little intimidating from our point of view, because uh, you know the, the Kubernetes is still going through a lot of the growth pains of how we organize different things. Uh, you know, Helm is a part of a special interest group, SIG apps inside of Kubernetes, and we're still working out all the details of how we do our governance model. And then we look at OpenStack, which has gone through uh, multiple iterations of trying to refine a good governance model and try to keep engineers empowered at the same time as trying to, you know, foster, uh, you know, cohesiveness among the projects, and and it's kind of like looking up like this and saying, 
wow, they built that whole tower, and here I'm working on my sandcastle. <laughs> and, and, and you know, a, a lot of times in open source, we focus so much on the technology, like what is the what is the code, and who is contributing, and what are the problems that we're trying to solve. But, but ultimately, the their open source communities are their their governance. That you know, there there is much and. Governance is a social construction, and um, you know, so, you know. So I'd like to hear more about kind of the challenges that we have, and you know, these the, essentially these two governments and these two communities of people working together towards towards shared goals. Like, what, what are some of the challenges we faced on that? The social challenges. From Cola perspective, it was quite the same, right? Because back two, three years ago, we were, it was me, it was Ryan who sits right there, it was Sam who sits right next to Ryan, and that, there are maybe two more people, right? And we did a good job out there, but now it's all over 200 people contributed in Okata alone, which were three, three uh, months old long project, uh, from its long release. So herding all these cats, everyone comes with their own plans and their own small agendas, however, however that may sound, but that's what it is. It's really nice, it, it's really great experience. And uh, I, I personally think, like in Cola, we threw our code base a couple times, like we ditched them all together and rewrite the thing, but it's not, the project didn't, change in a way that people who did that are the same people, because that's what product is to me. It's community, it's not decode. And that kind of resonates with what you just said, Chris. Yeah, I think uh, one of the more interesting aspects to come out of, you know, as, as sort of a governance issue, right, is that the average Kubernetes installation is still relatively small. Uh, uh, Likewise, the needs of the average Helm user are still relatively modest. So kind of our target application, if we were to be realistic, would be you know, your typical web app, right? We want to deploy a web app on top of Kubernetes. So we're going to need, at, at its more com, you know, at its basic uh, level, we want web server with some app code on it, maybe a database server, uh, and, and some kind of way of expressing an ingress. In, in Kubernetes, that's an ingress controller or a service. Uh, so we're talking about really three parts of which really only two of them are really moving parts, uh, right? The database and the, and the web application. Uh, there's a little bit of strain that comes into the picture when you take, when you say, okay, I want to be able to deploy with one system, you know, this kind of small web app, which we're going to have lots and lots of, and at the same time, uh, probably what I think is the most sophisticated single system that we've seen in the last decade, if not longer, right? Which is OpenStack. And we wanna be able to do both of those in the same, uh, with the same code base, right? The same Helm should be able to do either one. Now, uh, it can be difficult to sort of um, manage the expectations for both of these groups at the same time. And there's no real clear way to weigh out which of these two is your more important user base. Uh, so in the end, what we end up hoping for is that you know, enough people will show up to, say, the public developer meetings or the, the, these kinds of working groups and give enough good feedback that uh, you know, as someone who's one of the gatekeepers for Helm, when I set up a roadmap, I can say, OK, we're still helping you know, the, the small web app people get their, get their job done in an exceptionally easy, exceptionally uh, performant way. And at the same time, we're adding the right features to accommodate OpenStack without then turning around and saying, okay, I know you're just deploying your little web service with you know, your database, but now you have to add 70 new lines to your configuration file to switch off all these things that we switched on for, you know, that kind of thing. That to me has been one of the hardest and, and sort of, uh, if you wanna talk about it in political philosophy, right? It's, it's a difficult problem with democracy, right? How do you make sure that you're, uh, adequately re representing the, the populace that's going to be your user base. But that, uh, so the, the stretching that we were talking about is not just, we're not just stretching Helm in the sense that we're trying to deploy a complex application, but you know, uh, uh, our needs in particular is that Helm will, will be the interface not to deploy a, a web app to make that simple in Kubernetes. It will be managing hundreds of production OpenStack installations in terms of standing them up, It'll be managing them in terms of day two life cycle, and it has to operate flawlessly at the end of the day. 
Um, and so I think that's, a, that's also a stretch of the, the imagined use case of, of yeah, the initial imagined use case of, of Helm. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of taking it to the extreme, not only in terms of, of, of what we're asking the application to do for managing an application, but I mean, just, just using the, the, the Helm the Helm um, stack itself to, to do that for production installations that are doing some pretty complex stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to sleep anymore now that I know. <laughs> <laughs> we can always call you. <laughs> the, real, the real social, social issues. Uh, keeping, keeping the developers up at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so in hindsight, is there anything that, that you would have changed about this process? Like, like you know, and, and is there advice as, as we look for more collaborations between our communities and between other communities? You know, you know, things like best practices that you've learned and, you know, and, and, you know, and, uh, you know approaches to take. I think that from my experience, the best uniting thing is let's not make it political. Let's talk engineer to engineer. Let's meet together and solve the problem. Let's like when we, I think this is when the open source trust is built. It's built on reviews and it's built on patches and it's built on on that, that, hey, you fixed my problem, so I will help you fix your problem. And then we get into this uh, entangle, this common trust that we'll, we're just friends on, on the same, with the same problems or slightly different problems. But since we have this you know, ongoing, ongoing uh, trait of reviews or something like that, uh, we're helping each other. So bottom line, go to engineers, go talk to them, go to, go to their channel, ask them to join your channel, talk to them like people and just try to crack problems. And but I, well, I mean, but in going to that point as well, I mean, at, at the end of the day, the, the two groups that were, that were interacting with Helm at the end of the day are two projects that just have a, a, also a different way of, of accomplishing the same thing, but that wasn't part of the, the discussion. It was just, hey, you know, we're working with with Helm, so again, back to the you know engineers just trying to make this thing better and solve some use cases. Uh, but I think you know going forward, I think that we really lucked out with Helm in the sense that you guys were a great group of guys to work with, and you were really receptive to to us coming forward and trying to um, you know just have that dialogue about what we were trying to do. I don't know if we can depend upon that for you know across any CNCF project at the end of the day and. I don't know, you know, maybe the, the system that's been set up in, in place uh, about the, um, the, the OpenStack SIG and the, the process there might start help creating sort of a, a pipeline to start those conversations. Um, it would be great if we could replicate this across other projects. Um, but, you know, I, I'd, I'd hate for it to just, the success of this is just because we, we landed a, a great group of guys who were doing uh, managing Helm at the end of the day. Yeah, so I, I think I mentioned at the beginning that Helm is part of the special interest group inside of Kubernetes called SIG Apps. And uh, part of the goal with SIG Apps when we founded the group was to create a place that would help, uh, that would become an on-ramp to get application developers uh, and application builders um, bootstrapped into Kubernetes. And again, we were thinking, you know, like <laughs> small website, and uh, yet uh, you know, OpenStack was not the first one we would have picked. <laughs> but it has ended up being uh, a pretty amazing way of, of testing out that particular pipeline as well. Uh, and I know that uh, the Kubernetes, uh, well, I know SIG PM, for example, has been working on trying to make it easier in all of the SIGs to get involved in these ways. So I hope that it's something that's, uh, that will be cultural uh, I, I did OpenStack development quite a while ago and, and also found OpenStack uh, to be similar. Uh, I was involved fairly early uh, and it felt very open and it felt very friendly and I've always appreciated the fact that Kubernetes really feels the same, uh, same way to me as, as a member of the community. So we're so we're coming to the end of the panel. We just have a few minutes left and um, so I think, I think it, would be, it would be nice to maybe round it out by, um, you know, Forward looking, you know, like, you know, for, for each of your projects, what, what is, what, what do you see as the future of what's coming next and what can the, uh, you know, the people in the audience and the people watching this video later, what, what, what can they expect to see come out of your projects in the future? 
I, I can say a few <laughs> Some words. Projects. I mean. yeah. Uh, 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 pro projects like uh, the the OpenStack. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just, I, I mean, just, just in general, like you know, you know, you know the you know the status of your of your of your respective efforts and yeah. the other tooling mm -hmm. that's coming up around that. I mean, just you know what 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 we should be looking for in the coming months. Well, I mean, so clearly with a project labeled OpenStack Helm, we've made a firm commitment to Helm. So that part is not changing. So so I think we can look forward to us continuing that relationship and to continuing to try to take that further um, and to solve those things that we were talking about. In other words getting to a point where we have complete trust that we can do production installations and production day two operations in Helm, and we have the things that we need to manage that from an operator perspective. Um, and I mean, obviously, the, the project is, is, is nascent um, that, that we're currently working on, but uh, we hope that uh, you know, by release uh, 1.0, which is uh, in Oct October of this year, that we reach a point where we feel that it's actually stable and we we would guarantee day two operations from that point would support actual installations. Um, and again, much of that is, is due a, a lot in part to, to what Helm is, is powering for us under the hood. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's the thing. And I, I guess to, to add a little bit to that too, is on, on the Helm side of things, um, again, there's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things that, that we'd like to do to, to, to keep taking that a little bit further. I think uh, there's a number of things that I can say, but I think I think it could be described really simply as we kind of want to we want to keep pushing the Helm community to sort of stop treating the actor or the user of Helm as a real human on the command line and more as software. Um, I don't want to say I want to help them be more cloud native because that would be that would be terrible. Um, but but that's really what we want to do at the end of the day. We want the driver to be software for Helm, and that's the push. So for Cloud Kubernetes. Uh, well, we have a we had a session uh, called ro roadmap session in PTG, and Etherpad is still there. Uh, and but in general, we I mean our mission is to deploy and manage OpenStack, and uh, we want to deploy. We want to uh, be able to upgrade the OpenStack that we deploy. We want to so we want to f mm, meet the needs of operators. That was always our goal as Cola, and. Uh, that's, the, I mean, that's about it. We want to deploy and manage, upgrade, fix, reconfigure OpenStack. The uh, the 1.0 is, I, it will be done while it will be done. It's not possible to really schedule an open source project. However, uh, however, we st we are pretty close. We, I, f I think it's reasonable to assume that will be done in maybe few, a few months from now. The difficulty of scheduling has never caused any of us to refrain from trying to schedule it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. we try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, so Helm yeah. just had its first release, um, and it was, that was recent, wasn't it? Uh, the Helm 1.0 release? Uh, we're, at, we're at 2.4. We did our first release as uh, uh, since we were acquired by, my company was acquired by Microsoft, and so now, uh, you know, a week afterward, we did our first release as Microsoft employees. That was fun. Uh, where, where we are, though, I mean, so Helm 1.0, and I probably none of you ever used it. It was, we were off to, we had some good ideas. We got a start to it. It worked fairly well, but only for individual operators. Didn't scale for teams at all, almost by design. Uh, and so Helm 2.0 uh, took us about a year after, it took us three months to write Helm 1.0. This is the way it goes, right? A couple months to write the first version, then a year to write the second version. And uh, uh, right now, I feel like we're starting to hit that point where we have to focus on what it means to be a mature software project. We've made some decent uh, decisions very early on, like we're not going to change APIs. We're going to keep a whole bunch of these things committed to be uh, to retain stability and backward compatibility. But now we've got. Um, you know, extensibility is one of the difficult ones, right? We've toyed around with plugins. Every release, they're getting a little more powerful and a little more sophisticated. Uh, and, and hook systems follow sort of the same thing so that you can hook into more places during your deployment. And then really from here, uh, we're talking more about security, um, uh, long-term stability, um, and keeping up with Kubernetes, which being also a young project is often one of our bigger challenges uh, because it, it iterates very rapidly and consequently, so do we. Yeah. In the 
<laughs> explosive <Yeah>. in a way. <laughs> um, so I'll keep that in mind, though, about we should not treat our operators so much as humans, but treat them more like machines. Now that I understand, that's what everyone. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, well, are, are there any questions from the audience before we before we finalize the session? Is there anything that? Um... Yeah. Small room, but um, uh, first off, I, I work on OpenStack Helm uh, Core, and it's been great to work with. Mihao and his, his team, we owe a lot to Cola. We use Cola images, so that's really nice. Um, I think all three groups can say that there's been a helpful relationship between all three, honestly. We all have, have to thank each other. Um, Matt, to you. Um, now that Microsoft is, is there, it's out there, um, what do you see the future of Helm? Um, do you see this going into um, the window side, or is there talks or discussion? And then um, uh, taking it a little bit further, where do you plan on taking it over the next year? Yeah, so that's, that's a good question, because uh, somebody told me something about not making forward-looking statements. <laughs> it was in my onboarding training somewhere. Um, <laughs> so uh, one of the cool things that I feel like we did really well um, as part of CNCF uh, was a play that we learned from Google, which was make sure that, um, that the community owns the project. Um, and so the way we set up our governance committee uh, for Helm basically prevents one company from owning the majority of the, the voting shares for the core contributors. So what, uh, as, as much as I um, uh, play the benevolent dictator, uh, I can't be the benevolent dictator or, or otherwise. Um, because of the way we set it up. I feel like that has been a great thing. Uh, I like the fact that we made that choice very early on. Uh, so, so anything I say will reflect my views, but not necessarily the views of the collective core uh, contributors. I am positive that we will be working on some more features that will help uh, people who are on um, you know, Microsoft, particularly on Azure, be able to uh, use Helm to its fullest. Um, partly because now I do all my development on Azure. So, <laughs> um, but you know, really, our commitment is to Kubernetes as a community, and so that's where we really have focused our energy on continuing to add um, features. The big question is, w when will we start working on Helm 3.0? So we can't break any of our API contracts. No changes to the file, no modifications or deletions from the file formats or from the APIs or anything like that until the 3.0 um, milestone. And so we had originally talked about starting that late this year. Um, I will be curious in, you know, say July or August to see how much community momentum there is because we thought there would be a lot of it. Uh, currently, uh, pretty much all the big features we've figured out ways to do uh, alongside maintaining compatibility. We're going to try and improve diagnostic abilities quite a bit for operators. Um, so make it really easy to stream logs um, because one of the things is, uh, and I know, I'll try and rush this through here. We've got all these different components that collectively we say this is an application. Now, that works great for packaging, but when you need to go and get the logs and figure out what's going on, we're still, up until this point, have still been saying, okay, you're kind on your own. We'll tell you which resources to go look at, but you have to go tail the logs on this and the logs on this and the logs on that. That's one of the huge challenges and one that we have really realized as we hit that maturity phase was something that we've got to do in order to make this a usable project that people will be able to leverage on day two, uh, so all is right. that all right? All right. Well, we're we're over time now, so thank you everybody for coming, and uh, have a great week at the conference. Thanks. Thanks.